recording in progress. Welcome everyone. I will call to order the November meeting of the Hadley Committee for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Uh, we're also welcome to those of you that may be watching us on Hadley Media or at a later time on YouTube. We're glad that you're with us. So uh, the first item on our agenda is looking at our clerk's report from October 5th. I'll screen share it as well. You got Pat sent it in email, but I'll also share my screen so that we can review mm -hmm. and take any comments that folks have. Pat, I thought they were very very thorough. Yeah. Um, the only issue I had was it looked like you gave me credit for saying that the planning committee had smarts and intelligence. I don't think I said that. I wouldn't have said no if someone said it, but I'm, I don't, I wouldn't be that self uh, indulgent. <laughs> well, it says knowledge and dedication. Okay. Which I think we can endorse. So we can entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I would so move. And a second. 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 Great. And any comments, any further <clears throat> comments or suggestions? <coughs> Thank you, Pat. They look really good. Yep. Very I, good. I read through earlier. Looks good Thank to me. So I feel much. up to date. <laughs> I like how you pop out the action items. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. Very good. Great. And all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't have a Hopkins report. Um, that's the next item on our agenda, but we'll talk about um, the event that we have coming up next week. So under old business, our First Nations presentation comes up a week from tomorrow, November 9th, uh, at the library. Our commitment is that I'm going to work with Jason Burns to be sure that that the students are addressed thoughtfully uh, and given the opportunity to to speak on what they've prepared and we're asked to provide refreshments. So um, I don't have a I don't have a number from Jason. I would I would guesstimate maybe refreshments for 20 to 25 people. So I'm going to volunteer to provide apple cider and cups. Stole my thunder. Okay, I'll do the uh, cider donuts. Oh, nice. I'm sorry, Mary, you had your hand up. No, it's okay. I was just going to say I'll make some brownies or cookies or something like that. Great. I'll do is I'll make some muffins. I'll bring the healthy fruit. <laughs> Great, great. So um, Jason was hoping for some setup assistance starting at around 530. So I know I can be there and if anybody else is available to get there to help with setup at 530. I can probably do that. I, I, I should be able to do that. Great. I saw the flyer, but I don't have it. It starts at six or at seven? Six. Six. Okay. Thank six. you. And it's, it's expected to be about an hour, but the student, um, the work that they've created about Indigenous residents will be up uh, to, to view after that. And I think it's staying up at the library uh, for a little while after next Tuesday. I have a regular prior commitment at uh, 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. It's in Hadley, so I won't have to leave too early, but I will have to leave before it's mm -hmm. finished. 
<clears throat> now this is the same event as in the minutes that says yeah in the minutes it says 7 p.m so seven o'clock should we correct those oh yes so it's it it sticks thank you for catching that <laughs> yeah we're... i'm changing it in my calendar i had it in for some so you were saying set up would start at 5 30. Will someone look at the flyer? Because mine's at the office. Pretty sure the flyer says six to seven, because I was just looking at it with my. I don't know if I got a flyer. I don't know. Yeah, six to seven on the flyer. Okay, sorry, that was my bad. Here's um, in particular for, for our viewers at home. Here's the information that we handed out oh, at town okay. meeting. Right. And we hope we invite the community, for those of you watching at home, uh, to come to the library next Tuesday, 6 to 7 p.m. to see the work that our, our history, U.S. history students from Hopkins have done uh, in learning about indigenous people of our area and mm. in having a conversation about uh, the history of Columbus Day as well. If you ask Annie McKenzie to put that in her weekly newsletter because oh. she would be happy to do that and get it out to the whole school community. That'd be great. Is this going to the newspaper? Uh, should we should we send I, something? I I did that, uh, and supposedly it was passed along to Scott Mertzbach, and I haven't heard from Scott. So, um, mm. it would be worth my reaching out again to him directly. Just to see if we can get a little, a little attention to it. Right, he might know who it goes to. I'm not sure he does community events so much. Yeah, he does. He does He'd write a story about it. Yeah, he probably would show up and write a story. Well, he may not show up, but he'd write a oh. story. <laughs> True. Okay, if it's going out with this kind of thing, we better expect more more guests. Maybe. 30 to 40. Are you in the big room at the library? Good. And student di displays will be in other spaces throughout the library. So they're creating displays in sort right. of a science fair format. And did I read that they're presenting or just some of them or? Only some of them will be um, talking about Columbus Day, the history of that, indigenous people. Um, and I, I don't know how those students come to be presenting to us, but it'll take a couple, I guess. Maybe it'll be like a, my daughter's, she's in college, she's been to physics symposiums and you basically stand near your your presentation and anyone who comes up, you talk to, to them about it mm -hmm. instead of being in a central spotlight. Mm -hmm. Well, my understanding is that Jason has asked for chairs set up in the in the mm -hmm. big presentation room at the library. Oh, nice. so some, some students will be talking to assembled an assembled group. Okay. Great. So next on our agenda is our, um, our survey committee report. And I know Marg and Pat had recently worked on that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, the summaries were done and then I kind of shrunk them down into bullet points. Uh, unfortunately, Pat and I have not been able to connect. Our schedules have been really off kilter. Um, so we've yet to do that. I do have somewhat of a draft for Dr. Court um, that um, Pat and I are going to work on and actually include other materials in the, the 
um, you know, the some uh, the um, some of the other stuff that you guys have talked about in a previous meeting, I believe uh, some, I don't know, I think kind of merging other materials into it. Would that be correct? Right, because right. didn't uh, Bill Dwyer suggest using some of the same questions that were uh, in the long range planning uh, process so that answers to those questions would then sort of line up in a coherent way. That's, I thought that was a great suggestion of his. Those are huge the documents, other, but they're very interesting. I recommend reading them. <clears throat> the other thing that's going on concurrently is the age-friendly Hadley survey that's going oh. out. And I would oh, encourage yeah. you all to take that if you have not. It's online. Go to the Council on Aging page. But I don't know if you want to try and line up your questions with that, too, and we can keep hitting people with the same kinds of concepts. True. So what what is our next step right now for for this work? So my my feeling uh, was that we were or originally we had we were trying to see if Dr. Court could get a grad student um, or suggest an undergrad who might be able to help us uh, as a project, but you know we didn't have any money for any of that. So uh, I reached out and I contacted um, a woman whose name I don't remember, but she runs uh, one of the diversity inclusion, and and her name had come come to me. I'd have to dig around again to to see why her name came to me, but she was part of a, a grad program and DEI uh, overlap. Uh, and she basically uh, didn't think she could help. That's the upshot of that. So we have no money to give that. And Dr. Court was the one who had suggested like if we had $5,000, you know, to give a grad student, but we don't. Um, I, I think my goal would be to talk to Pat about it since, well, two reasons. Pat has had experience at Emanuel, right, Pat, where you yeah. worked with a professor who seemed, you know, uh, you know who, who talked to um, new folks and, and, and got a program underway with his class. Yes, and I, I think we also talked about, Margaret, that we were going to use, as Jane suggested, and also Bill suggested, the survey data that we already have, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that we can start there and see what information we've already collected, and then look to see, consistent with the mission that we have, what areas do we need to do further research on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jane? Uh, is this the Council on Aging survey funded in any way? We got approved to work with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So there's no cost to the town. And they gave us basically someone for, I think it's 40 hours to help us get the survey started and, and take us through the whole um, becoming an age-friendly community. Well, we can certainly look into that, um, Pat and I can, and see if that's something, um, a source of funding. I can send you the contact of the woman we're working with, and I would, I don't know specifically how their funding works, but you could say that you're this other committee and you're looking if there might be any funding available for you. That would be really appreciated. Great. Okay, I will send that after the meeting. Yeah, that's so that's essentially it. And that's all I have to report on. Pat and I will get together and uh, have something for everyone, um, which we'll probably send out before our next meeting. Mm -hmm. That would be my goal. Mm -hmm. 
Great. I apologize for the um, for the lag time here. I, I really, really wanted to get this done. You know, when we first talked about it back then, but um, circumstances beyond my control, kind of. Uh, uh, but we're gonna we're we're working on it, and we're gonna do our best to get this material out to you. Okay, anything else on the survey? Okay, so um, is there anything on, I guess new business and open agenda are, I, I didn't put anything on new business. So if I have anything that anybody wants to raise, go ahead, Mark. Um. I guess I want to know something that we had talked about one other time. <clears throat> um, it came to my attention that um, sometimes the language used, whether it's in our own meetings or other meetings, um, is not entirely sensitive to uh, other groups of people in town or wherever. Um, and Kayla, I remember when we met with one of the towns, other towns who also have DEI committees. And indeed, one time we met with um, a, a person on one of the committees who is actually uh, a human rights. Uh, they had, and they didn't call it a DEI, they called it, um, I think it was human rights, wasn't it? Something like that? In Wenham. So their function was a little different, um, but they, they dealt with complaints so that anyone in town could call or write an email to us and say, you know, they had this experience or that experience, or they could report, um, you know, insensitive uh, or degrading language and that sort of thing. And I remember, Caleb, when we talked about it, it's like, well, legally, you know, what what is what's the implications of this? We, we none of us have a, a legal degree, um, but how do we deal with? I guess so. Hypothetically, the the you know the question still remains: What do we do if we get complaints about mm. the treatment of people? Um, how, how do we deal with this? How do we deal with complaints about language or uh, that sort of thing? Mark, I see your hand. Well, I'm thinking obviously we don't have an official uh, authority to take any action, but we could certainly serve as advocates and shine a light on it so that if they came to us and we were able to do a little you know, research, verification, vet it, and uh, go to the source or the so you know if the source has uh, an employer or something like that you know that's something we could consider of course again we have to remember that we are not a free spirit we serve at the at the pleasure of the select board so um jane might have some thoughts on limitations there so what can you give me an example of what you're saying? Hypothetical. Hypothetical. Um, let's just say we refer to a group of people in an inappropriate way. Um, in a slightly derogatory term. You mean we refer to somebody or we, an or, organization or, has? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're or, called or in. we overhear it. We're in a meeting and we overhear it from someone else who might be speaking to us. What do we do in situations, not to finger point, but to elevate the conversation to a broader level about, you know, the, you know, you're, you're talking about individuals, individuals yeah. of us, not a committee action. Right, I, I don't want to get too detailed about it. And I, and I apologize for the vagueness, 
but um, I don't feel I'm really at liberty to discuss that part. Uh, really what I want to bring to the committee is what do we do when we receive complaints about how language has been used, whether it's uh, on a committee-wide level, whether it's from uh, town officials, whether it's from specific people who live in town. You know, we want, we want to make sure that we don't devolve into you said, he said, she said, but that we do something to, um, you know, just to discuss, I mean, if we're diversity, equity, inclusion, how do we handle these things? I, I think that's really what I, I want to focus on. Wayne, you're shaking your head. Uh, that's just so broad. Uh, and I can think of five instances right off the top of my head that are all different and that would require us <clears throat> to really think through before we did anything as a committee. I think, uh, I think it would depend on what comes to us. And then we have to investigate what kind of charge we have to do something about it. Uh, How do we even talk about it as a committee when, when we don't want to do finger pointing? Well, we discuss it and just find information about it. That would be my guess. But the first thing is to do is to investigate and find out what's going on in as deep a manner as we can. And yeah, that's that's my thought. Mark? Well, I was thinking of a case in point from earlier in our, you know, maybe a year ago when I was still a clerk and Wayne was the chair. I think on several occasions I said, you know, I made light of the fact that here we are, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we're being administered or run by two old white men. Well, that could offend people, you know, calling us old. Um, so there's an example. If if that were the case, I would hope that less than a quorum. Um, so we could meet offline, could approach me about it and say, Mark, I really don't think you should refer to the, even if it includes you as, as old, um, and you might use this other terminology, you know, I'm just taking this as a, an example that actually occurred. And I would hope that, you know, um, the, if, the, you know, if, if you couldn't approach the, culprit, uh, the source, um, then in the next meeting, it gets talked about in a broader, more general um, phase and even or, or both, you know, approach the person and then say in, in the next meeting, you know, if, if, uh, if we've offended anyone by calling them old, we're going to uh, beg your forgiveness and realize that that's just another adjective that we've grown up with that we need to learn um, hurts certain people. Um, thank you. Um, you know, I mean, and part of this, you know, thank you for bringing that up that I hadn't thought about that. But, um, you know, part of this is I, I don't think any of us wants to be the word police, right? That That's, we don't want to go there. I mean, we're not mm -hmm. not trying to do that. We're we're, you know, and and I'm and I'm. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just asking for some thoughts about how, how do we how do we deal with this, Kayla? You're muted. Yeah, I was going to say, that, and we mentioned this a while back. We just don't have a system in place. Uh, people in our community, I think, need to feel that there is some place to go if they encounter something disturbing to them. Uh, and I think that's our role, but we're kind of making it up, you know, building the plane in the air. Um, and I'm not really sure what we could put in place that's kind of a system if we were to receive a report. I know Jane, you had a comment. So I see two different things. One is internal use within this committee of words. And the other is complaints to the committee from outside. 
I'm going to forget about the first one for right now and talk about complaints from outside. I think if you have had examples of this, and I know it's hard because you want to keep them neutral and not have individuals involved, but if you could say in such and such, a, in a store in town, this person who was of some whatever ethnicity or sex or age or whatever was discriminated against because the shopkeeper said. So if you can figure out a few examples like that, then I would recommend you get it organized and go to the select board and say, what would you like us to do? Mm -hmm. you, we are your committee. We represent diversity in this town. How do you want us to handle this? Jane, is it is it anything that we could set up in advance so that we have at least some very general mm. ideas of process? Um, my experience with the select board is they need graphic descriptions of what they're thinking about. So to ask for an abstract, what would you like us to do? You won't get anywhere. I mean, it won't be efficient for either either group. Would it be helpful if we were to at least offer some proposed ideas? Would yes. That help you? I would think it might. Yeah. Yes. I think asking them for the solution versus giving them multiple choice. Right. I mean, this right. topic is reminding me about all the work that's out there about what they call call out culture and call in culture. There's a professor at Smith College who gives workshops on what she calls the call-in culture, which is where you can bring up things in a way that's uplifting and not shaming. Because what I see is there is a way that people can call, I'll use the term call out, but make people feel um, really upset because they, like, if we just use Mark's idea, example, Mark didn't have an intent of, of prejudice towards elders in that comment. Um, but someone might take it that way. And if we were to say, you know, you idiot, why did you say that? That's going to make him feel shamed. Um, I'm not any expert at this, but I've been reading about it. And, um, you know, this is just making me think that a possible service, I'm not ready to volunteer for this. I have to think about it, would, would be, you know, offering a, a workshop with someone who was trained in that. And what do we do when a coworker or someone at the store or, you know, those incidences, I, I think it's a good point that we we feel uncomfortable and we notice these offenses or we notice that someone took it personally, but it's very uncomfortable. Um, those are just some thoughts. Wayne? I think we're stepping into a minefield mm -hmm. that we are not prepared for. Yeah. I did not sign on to this committee to be that to walk through that minefield. And if we're gonna do it, it's gonna take more than meeting what for an hour once a month. We're gonna to have to do some training ourselves and we're gonna to have to change the mode of this committee. Uh, I think that's something totally different from what we have been charged to do. I'm not saying I wouldn't go there at all, but I think if we're gonna do it, it needs a commitment and a lot more training than we have. And I wouldn't, as I said, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but I'm saying we should be very cautious when we step into this. It's very different from what we have been charged to do and what we're working on. Mm -hmm. Mark? I, I hear what Wayne's saying, but I also think that if we don't do it at all, um, then we're kind of like equity, inclusion. Oh, no, don't come to me with a problem. You know, I don't so, think that at all. No, no. It's so, and I, I'm not trying to say that's what, that's what you're saying, but I'm just saying the other extreme. So I, I would suggest maybe we have a subcommittee of maybe two or three people that can, <clears throat> that can um they can field such things and vet that and they can bring them to the whole committee if that comes up and it can be discussed and maybe just by discussing it 
at helping address it if we do it in a non finger pointing um, constructive educational way. I'm wondering if there's enough of this, um, what, call it incorrect, or people being affronted by what's being said, that once the word got out that this committee was the place to go if you had a problem, hmm. it might just overwhelm <laughs> the time that people have. Oh, no, I can imagine. That's what I, Wayne's saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I was at Thanksgiving when my my brother-in-law said something about, you know, he said something and then uh, this Asian woman and his daughter said, you can't call her that. He said, what do I call her if I don't call her Asian? You know, um, uh. you, know you can just, that line can keep moving. So it is, as you say, it's a, it can be a minefield, but it is, I think something we shouldn't um, rule out. We, you know, it shouldn't, be, I, I don't think we need to promote that. You know, we're not the equity police, but we would like to be um, a place, I, mean, I would like it if we were a place that someone who felt offended could come and at least talk to, and we could hear them, whether we do anything publicly about it, or we just speak with them and come up with ideas. Um, I, I like the idea of us at least being open to that and being seen as a potential resource or, I don't know. Mm. But yes, I'm sure it gets into legal and awkward um, areas, but hey, I don't think this is going to be a clean and easy issue. And there are, you know, as someone, oh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll wrap up so that Wayne can speak, but uh, as someone kind of indicated before, there's, there's not black and white, you know, you're inclusive or you're not, there's many shades of gray. I mean, there's, um, you know, there's someone who says something that's meant to be vindictive and, and hurtful, and there are people that say things that they don't realize, and it's not about what you intend, it's about how it's received. And then there's some people that will just can't be pleased. You know, there will be people mm -hmm. that just have so much mm -hmm. hurt, hurt and, and victimization that there may not be a happy ground. So I will yield. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I actually, before Wayne, I'll call on Pat. Yep. I think you've raised a very important question, Margaret. Um, and I guess I see that there are there may be some systems in place in town to deal with these issues. If I recall, Chief Mason talked specifically about the way that his department handles complaints. Mm. Um, he didn't specify uh, the issues, but they have a system in place. And, and so I guess as I listen to people and think this through, um, I think that could be one of our roles to make known um, what's available in the various departments in town. So if we look to the groups and the individual, the individuals we met that represent different um, groups, the HR director, the superintendent of schools, the chief of police, if the issue were to arise in those various circles, we could look to see what systems are in place. Frequently organizations have built in systems to deal with this. Um, so that would be one thing. And then the other thing, you know, that I think about is just the educational burden that people have mm. to, to highlight um, appropriate language, dated language, you know, there could be some roles that we can play and even include some things, you know, on the website. I, I attended mm. a really interesting workshop once in which the facilitators talked about garbage can language and um, words like lame um, that, that mm -hmm. many people grew up using um, that are offensive. So, you know, there could be an educational burden. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is I know that you, Margaret and Kayla, you uh, you spoke with other committees that have in place some systems. 
So I, I certainly would support looking at those in addition to looking at our own town systems. Mm. Thank you, Pat. I think we came up with some solid suggestions there. Yeah. Me? I, I would second what Pat has said and, and, and emphasize that we are not qualified to handle the specific complaints uh, and that there are people in town who are and systems in place to handle those. And I, I'm not saying we shouldn't receive complaints. Uh, we certainly should, but we should be careful about where, what we do about them. And I, I definitely do not think we are qualified to handle those directly. Uh, and uh, nor do I want this committee to be seen as the place to go with those kinds of complaints. Um, so uh, that's what I was saying. What what Jane suggested, we might carry those to another place, uh, be a conduit for them, but I don't think we're qualified to handle them. Jane? Um. Do the other groups that you've talked to that have something in place, are they willing to share that, that we could all look at it? We can, we can certainly go back and ask. Because that would give us a broader sense of what others were doing and something that we might actually have as a presentation if, if and when we go to the select board to say other groups, such as East Hampton or whoever, has this policy. And we're wondering what the town would like us to do. We could do this or this or this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kayla, was the, so I can go back over my notes on, on the Wenham group and, and see, um, because that, that was really a different, uh, a different approach that town took. Well, we spoke with three other communities, none of them right around here and mostly much larger communities than ours. Um, but I think they all had systems in place. And, and although I do see it as a hornet's nest, I wonder if just by providing resources, tapping into the kind of resources that uh, Pat was talking about and saying, I'm gonna connect you with, um, would be helpful. I just feel it's very important if we, if we're, you know, our, we've, we've said that our mission, and I know all of you, I've worked with all of you, and I know that, that beyond the mission of the committee, it's a mission for each and every one of you to, uh, to make this community as welcoming or help this community grow in its ability to welcome and, and treat with equity. And, uh, mm. and so I, I do feel that in some way we need to be here for people who are looking for solutions. Uh, if, you know, if, 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 and, and I agree, Wayne, that, that I certainly don't feel qualified to handle a serious issue. I don't have the background or training, but if I could learn more about where to direct somebody or how to amplify an issue that's taken place. Um, I, I like that. Um, you know, I, I like what Pat was saying too about um, finding out what systems already exist in town. And Jane, I, I gather there there is no place really to bring complaints. Is that, would that be correct? If it's within the town, you might use the HR person. Oh, so if it's okay, all right, all right. But, but otherwise, if it's, a, if it's a you know resident of the town, if it's a private sector, I mean, other than Chief Mason, I don't know where you would. Why, and Chief Mason would just I would assume be dealing with just his police department complaints against individuals within the police department. Well, it might depend because some language is hate language and it's illegal, yeah. you know, depending on the circumstances. So, you know, some some behavior it does fall under the hate crime 
-hmm. umbrella. So, you know, again, I think, you know, we're talking generally, but I do think that there are some, some behaviors that are actionable because they're illegal. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, Although could, if involve, you were the... could involve Chief Mason or his, his team, his staff. And I'll just I'll just respond to that. I know Wayne was going to speak and Sarah as well. But to respond to that, we did hear in one community where the chair of the DEI committee and the police chief mm -hmm. went to the home of somebody who had encountered some hate speech mm -hmm. um, and talked through what their options were and and were really able to to shut it down. Right. Good, Sarah. Yeah, because I was just going to say if you were a member of a marginalized community and you experienced some kind of hate speech, you're probably your first impulse isn't to call the police because we all know <laughs> what the reputation of the police in the United States is and whether or not, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know what, where Hadley's police department falls on that spectrum. But if a member of this committee went with such a person to the police who were sympathetic and supportive, as they were in that other town, that might be effective. Okay. So I think it might be worth the conversation with Mike Mason because Hadley now has a social worker on call with the police department. So two different things going. One is find out what he thinks this committee should be doing and what kinds of definitions he has for hate crime words, if you will. Um, and then that's something that we can try to educate people about. And the other is, is this, if we hear of something like this, is the social worker somebody that we can refer problems to? Or does it need to go through the police? The person is on salary with the town, well, through a grant, but nonetheless, with the town. Um, and may be accessible to others besides the police. I don't know. Mm. Thank you, Jane. Go ahead, Wayne. Okay. Yeah. I could see our committee serving the community by being a conduit if somebody did come to us to help them get to the appropriate place for redress or for being heard. Hear them, yeah. That, that I see as a legitimate part of our role. I think the issue is so complicated and so complex, we could spend the next five meetings just talking about what we might do and then getting to specifics about it. There's so many versions of this. But I, I don't want to give the impression that I don't want us to deal with it. But I think we should deal with it on a specific basis if something gets to us, not to take this on as one of our major roles. And it would be a major role if we take it on. It would change the, the content of our work. So, yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure that's even what, what we're suggesting here. Um, but I certainly hear you. I, I don't want us to do that. None of us are qualified. Hmm. Right? It's, you know, it's like someone said, you know, what kind of training do we have? We don't. But, but uh, yes, I agree, you know, some sort of conduit, um, that would be great. As Pat suggested, what systems are in place? As Jane suggested, can we use social workers? You know, the, 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 you know in other words, what, what is in town already that we might be able to use? And, um, and, you know, and I don't know, but I mean, um, this discussion is certainly um, revealing some options we, we, can, we can fall back on, um, you know, without saying that we're, I, none of us want, none of us want to be police and, uh, but, but, you know, we, we need to figure out a way to address these concerns when they do come to us. Yes, Wayne. At another time, I would volunteer to just do investigations and bring back to the committee what our options would be 
if somebody came to us with a complaint. I can't do it in the next uh, three weeks, but I would be happy to work with somebody just to say, what are our options? Should somebody come to us with a complaint, what do we do? What could we do to be helpful? And Thank you. Thank I you. think getting that information would be very helpful to us. Okay. Jane, you're muted. Jane, you're muted. Have you posed that question of what the committee could do to others like Amherst, Northampton, East Hampton, if their DEI committee has even looked at this as a question? No. I, I think that, pose this to, no, no. Uh -uh. It's worth a that call to somebody. That would be a part of the investigation to find out what we can do, what would be appropriate for us to try. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask, is anyone willing to work with Wayne on this? Mark? Mark? Yeah, I, 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 I would be willing to work with Wayne on this. I think that we, we might complement each other well. I think he has the voice of reason and I have, the, I have this impulse that if not us, who do they go to? So that's one of the nicest things that's been said to me in a long time. Mark. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so, all right. So we can say Mark and Wayne. Then we'll uh, we'll um, and we will welcome and include others. Yes, anybody who wants to give information or help us find information. <clears throat> um, otherwise. Uh, <coughs> You guys will look into what uh, what the local towns do. Kayla and I can check in with the groups we've spoken with, um, and then maybe just agree to meet uh, after that, um, or come back to the group, and then we can have a a, a continuation of this discussion. May I mean, suggest that if anybody along the way has a thought, they don't have to be on the with Mark and I to, to contribute a thought or an idea or a piece of information that they need we, that would lead us in the right direction. Information would be very helpful uh, as we get our act together. So and Mark, in, you and I can talk about separately how we can connect. So right. in looking at this particular action item, um, would that include, are you, are you thinking Mark and Wayne that you would be the people to reach out to Chief Mason and find out what options might be available there. That makes sense as a part okay, of it. Because we, we could. As, as I understand it, we're asked to gather information about the issue. Yeah. But I do yeah. think that the, the co chairs, we're going to reach out to the people you've already met with from yes. other towns, right? So if we look to other towns that you haven't, then, but if you can pull that where you already have a, a rapport. Um, and I think Jane's thought about, about local towns is, is really useful. Yes. Um, Cause that's definitely not who we've spoken with. Pat, go ahead. I think Jane also mentioned HR. So maybe you could also look at that Wayne and Mark and even the schools, the, you know, are there, is there a system in the school if one student, you know, were to, um, you know, make a racist comment or, you know, what are the systems that are currently in existence? And from there, maybe we can get some good ideas. And also maybe Pat, um, have this posted on, once we get all this information in place, figure it out the appropriate steps, we could maybe put it in a document up on our website. I'm a big believer that we're all not all, but a lot of us are oblivious, myself included, to institutional racism that we rely on, that we use and uh, proliferate um, unwittingly. So let's go. I like it. If, if I can extend just for a minute, I'd, I'd love to have suggestions about what we're investigating somebody to be as specific as you can from your points of view, what it is you want Mark and I 
to find out about, uh, to give words to it. I'd, I'd like to find out what systems are in place in different parts of our community to address incidents, concerning incidents of racism, ageism, homophobia, sexism. Prejudice. Prejudice of bias, of bias and or exclusion in our community. Yeah, I think, I think ultimately what we, what we want is really just ways in which we can all show people who live in this town that we, we really, um, we walk the walk, we talk the talk, we, we, uh, that the town is welcoming from the highest levels down to uh, residents, you know, so that people know that, that they feel, that they can feel comfortable. Great. Thank you for bringing that up, Margaret. I think that's really valuable work. Thank you. Anything else on that? I'm I'm trying to think of of what we are charged to do, and I I would like Mark and I to do a little more honing of the charge that you've given us. Right now, I see about a year or two's work um, in all of those areas, and I'd I'd like to focus a little bit more, at least at the start. Um, this is a pretty long list that we just came up with. So. so whatever you do is going to be great. It's going to be movement in the right direction. How about, Wayne, rich. <laughs> how about Wayne, if you and I, before the next meeting, we come up with our own charge and bring it back to the committee and they can add or detract from sure. there. Is that the kind of thing we can communicate between meetings about? We're less than a quorum. Uh, I mean, can we communicate with the committee about what we talk about privately? Uh, yeah, because we're not voting disseminate, on it. You could disseminate information to the committee. Right. We, we can't, can't. We can't have a discussion. A discussion of it. Right. And people can send you information. And right. it's good if you send it to everybody. Okay. Do it as a group. Right. Group Instead of targeting. Uh -huh. sending. Right. And then it's, but don't, once you have an email thread running, you can't say, well, I think this about it. Or right. You can't put opinions on it. You can have conversations without opinions, basically. Okay. Sharing information, but not, not mm. contemplating action. Yeah. Mm. Right. I'm glad to take this on, and I hope you will all take that as an invitation to, to give thoughts okay. to us to guide what we're doing. I'm trying to set it up. This is an important time to focus what we're going to do and not just spread out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Mark. Thanks to both of you for stepping up as well. Stepping away. I think I think more it's like everybody else stepped back. <laughs> <laughs> and we wound up stepping forward. <laughs> So uh, those are actually two of the, I, I was kind of noting what action items do we have? So um, that was looking at systems for reporting in other communities was part of what I heard Wayne and Mark talking about and talking to the uh, leaders in this community, particularly Chief Mason about possibilities in this community. Um, Margaret and I took on the action item of going back to the towns that we've spoken to out of this area who may have systems in place and um, finding out what those systems are. A couple of other action items that came up and, and I don't think were resolved is somebody reaching out to Annie McKenzie about next week's program and asking if she could share that information. However, she communicates with town people. That needs to be done before Thursday morning of this week because her newsletter goes out at the end of the week. All right, well, I'll do that. 
And I guess at the same time, I could roll that into reaching out again to Scott Mertzbach. So I'll, I'll do both of those items. Thank you. And bring cider next week. Great. Is there anything else um, that would be an open agenda item? Oh, uh, Hadley Learns on Thursday night. And uh, just for the benefit of all of us and our, our any audience, can oh, you right. say more about, about um, this time is and what's part... on the agenda? Two or three, I've lost track of the um, series on Indigenous people's concerns. I think it might be part three, September, October, November. Or... And I've when and where? So directions lately. Pardon? Where and when? Uh, Thursday night on Zoom. Um, if you go on the Hadley Learns, if you aren't already on the Hadley Learns email list, uh, you can get on it and find all the information by going to hadleylearns.org, I think. Um, why don't I minimize Zoom so I can look in my email folder for... You can send it to us later. Yeah, but if I say it out loud, then it will be in the recording of the meeting. Making sure this thing comes in out. any event it's this thursday night the first thursday of the month at right. seven o'clock okay oh, and a google finding... search of hadley learns will will take people yeah. to that website i'm sure yeah i think it will mm -hmm. i'm not finding it real fast here sorry maybe it's i don't know i'm i opened the wrong email okay. that covers it sorry okay. I just Google it every time I go look. Okay. Maybe, maybe and Sarah, that's... while you search for that, I'll take the pressure off you and talk about something that's on my mind, just I think open item it might be. So I mentioned before we started recording that I'm also um, involved with a circle of care for um, people that we have evacuated, that our, our government has evacuated from uh, Afghanistan that were uh, often their lives were a threat for supporting um, our efforts there. Um, it's, and it was very, some, I'm going to share something that was very disturbing or upsetting to me was, uh, I'll try not to mention the particular social media, but I was, because I'm on only one now, and I didn't even think of it as social media, but there were someone posted that they um, locally were um, doing this, they were doing it through the Jewish um, charities and that um, if anyone had any extra clothes or something like that. And then a few people said, oh yeah, I've got some extra. And then I posted, yes, I'm doing that with the Catholic charities. And it didn't take but about a day or two before, I, I, I don't know what to, you know, maybe I'm not being inclusive, but I'm going to call them trolls. They're just angry, nasty, hateful posts about what we were trying to help some people. And it was turned into, you know, take care of your own first. What about the veterans? What about the homeless? And a few nice people tried to tried to respond and say, you know, this is different. You know, you know, someone said, you know, they're coming in here illegally. And, I, and you know, it's like, no, this is not the, the, the Texas border. This is people that our government has brought in to save them from being, you know, tortured or, or, or killed. It, it's just, um, and, and I was just going to mention that I know that at least, you know, the, the Charities are searching for temporary and permanent housing for them and trying to get them jobs so that they can become self-sustaining parts of our community uh, because the government will only support them for like a couple months. And then, the, and then the, the religious charities try to support them for the rest of the year because I guess history shows it takes 
when you get just dropped into a different culture. It takes about a year to get your feet under you and get to be self-sufficient. So, um, but there are, um, they are being located in communities all around us. Uh, I don't know of any in Hadley yet, but um, that's something near and dear to my heart that's right nearby, it's right next door. Um, you know, e either side of us and, and south of us and uh, just food for thought, so. So it is HadleyLearns.com. I did the, the Google search method, which worked. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Anything further? Okay, friends, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, December 6th. And we'll be on Zoom. And uh, with that, I'll Take a motion to adjourn. So move. And a second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. It's great to see everybody. Thanks for being here. Joanne, I'm so happy that you're able to be back with us. It's nice to be here. Thank you. All right. See you Good next time, you, everybody. Jane. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Everyone, everybody. Bye.